Hey there, everybody. This is Dr. Brooke Goldner. I'm just making sure everything says I'm live before I start. There we go. There it is. Now everything confirms. Okay. Hey there. So this is Dr. Brooke Goldner from Goodbye Lupus, and I'm happy to be here with you today for my Wellness Wednesday. I come on live every Wednesday whenever I can to be able to help all of you live better, take action on your health, whether it's mental or physical, be healthier, be happier, live better lives. Can't substitute for medical advice. I can't treat a patient over a post coming over Instagram or Facebook or YouTube, um, but I'm happy to help you every way I can. And I also wanted to just quickly give all of you a shout out. I've been doing this as a public service for a year now. And uh, the amount of folks who've been coming have been amazing. Uh, the last live I did last week, there was over a thousand people on live. Uh, so first of all, thank you so much for honoring me with your trust and your time. It means a lot to me uh, to be able to give to you and to know that you guys are coming back and, and helping. There was a comment yesterday that actually made me tear up. There was a comment on YouTube that said it was wonderful from the first second to the last. I'm like, she watched everything. And uh, it just it just made me tear up because it gives me so much meaning and so much purpose and so much happiness to know that I'm making a difference in your life and that you're here to receive the help that I want to give you. So thank you for that. Um, it really means a lot. So uh, now on top of that, uh, it also means that obviously I'm not gonna be able to answer all the questions. <laughs> so every once in a while, someone will be like, you know, I didn't even answer my question. I'm like, over a thousand people show up. And I like to give thorough answers. And I also know that some of these questions I've answered in other lives and they're all uh, recorded into all the different areas, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. And, uh, and that all of you learn from other people's questions too. So I do the best that I can. So I was thinking, to start today, since so many of you are coming and and here with me and uh, asking these questions and looking for help, that I'd love to be able to help you do a motivation check for yourself. So we are now finishing. Uh, well, it's all, we're in the third week of January, and as I've taught in other lives, motivation, the initial spurt of motivation that people get, usually lasts about two weeks. And then it starts to die off, right? That's why the gyms are full the first two weeks of January, often, you know, New Year's resolution. And then by the third week, it starts to taper off. Maybe one person sticks around, then you're down to the usual crew, right? So since we are kind of past that two-week mark, and I know that some of you might have made New Year's resolution. Some of the people that I've seen over the past couple of weeks have told me that they've been on plans since January 1st, right? New year, new me everybody's that's everybody's slogan right new year new me so uh let's check in and see how you're doing so one of the ways that i do it i'm going to give you some insight in how i diagnose people's motivation because one of the things that that people know me for is that i'm able to actually get people to do what it takes to get healthy right um i once was talking to a doctor who teaches plant-based he's a surgeon he teaches his patients to be plant-based he's not a teacher that's, you know, on the big stage or anything, but he, he tells his patients to be plant-based. And he told me that he will tell his patients to switch to a plant-based diet, to heal better from surgery and have healthier joints. He's an orthopedic surgeon. And he said, if they don't do it, he fires them as a patient for being non-compliant. And it made me laugh. I said, you understand it's not that easy, right? People don't just change their diet because you say, oh, this way is better. And they go, oh, thanks. There's so much more involved, right? So my specialty is helping people understand why they're not choosing better things for themselves, whether in terms of their self-care, their diet, why are you choosing to continue to do something that hurts you when you know it hurts you? I often do that for people in relationships, right? Codependency and trauma and all of abuse, all of that, it's not as easy as saying, oh, that's bad for me, I'll just stop. For many people, it takes a lot more. And so when I'm talking to a person and you know, they come on to a meeting with me. So I, I do live uh, meetings over Zoom or FaceTime, whatever people like. And it's a 75 minute meeting so I can get to know you and figure out what's going on in your head as well as what's going on in your body. Right. And so I will, while I'm listening to a person, be evaluating their motivation because I know I can give them the perfect plan for recovery, which I do. I email a full plan. It's usually like eight pages long, sometimes longer. Here's exactly what to do, how to eat to get yourself healthy 
and then how to maintain it, do step down, everything. I make it just everything's in the notes so you could take them and be like, this is my plan and go do it, right? But I know that I can't do that unless I know someone's going to follow it. I could. I could be like that other guy and be like, here, eat this. And if you don't, don't come back. I don't do that. I listen to hear what the motivation is and what's motivating them to take action and what's motivating them not to. Because the, both of those things matter. Most people, when they think about motivation, they're thinking about motivation is about wanting to do something. But that is not always the case. There's motivation to do things. And there's motivation not to do things. That's why whenever someone says, I'm not, I'm not a motivated person, I'm lazy. I'm like, you are motivated. You're motivated to lay on your couch. Right? They're motivated to do nothing. <laughs> right? So we're always motivated is the key. And so I try to evaluate people's motivation, help them see themselves clearly, right? Last week I was talking about how people tend to um, make things into personality traits. Like, oh, I'm a people pleaser, right? I'm a perfectionist. When really, and I do this because that's how they bat away the responsibility to change their action, right? Oh, that's just who I am. And so if you're interested in that, uh, actually, I just posted a clip of it yesterday. But the other part of it is really letting you see your motivation for and against what you should be doing so you can take action. And by the way, if you know better and you're not taking action, often what that means is you're both, you have motivation to do it and motivation not to do it. And so that's keeping you frozen. That's called ambivalence. Okay. So here's a quick test. I'll give you an example, by the way. So I'm to someone yesterday and she said, oh my gosh, Dr. G, I've read all your books. I've read your husband's book. I got all the books. I've done all classes. And I want you to know that a few months back, I went on the full goodbye lupus protocol to the best of my ability. And I, no, she didn't. She did hyper nourishing plant-based. She didn't even do the full goodbye lupus protocol. She went plant-based. So she got rid of the meat and dairy and everything. And she added hyper nourishment and she did it right. She did add hyper nourishment correctly. And she goes, it was amazing. In four weeks, I felt so much better. Most of my symptoms were dramatically better. And even my thyroid function test on my, on my lab test got better. It was amazing. And I said, okay, great. Then what happened? And she said, well, I kind of got sick of smoothies. Um, I didn't feel like drinking smoothies anymore. So I stopped the smoothies. I said, okay. So you stopped the smoothies. So, but you were getting better, right? So you kept going, but you just switched to salads, right? And she goes, no, I didn't do that. I was like, okay. So you didn't switch to salads. You found a new recipe for smoothies and then you kept going, right? She said, oh, no, no, I didn't do that. So, oh, okay. Um, you thought, all right, while I'm figuring out the right dressing to make me want to eat salad, I'll just stay plant-based, right? She said, no, I didn't, I didn't do that either. I said, okay. And I could tell by her face before she started telling me this, what the answer was, but I wanted her to see before she even told me I was sick of smoothies and so I gave up, I wanted her to see what a decision tree should look like. So I asked those things to try to make her realize like, oh, no, I didn't do that. Oh, no, I didn't do that. Oh, no, I didn't do that. I said, okay, tell me what you did. She said, I went back to eating meat and dairy again. I said, okay. And what happened? Just, I lost all the results and I feel really sick. I said, so when you felt sick again, you went back on the plan, right? No, I didn't. I said, okay. I said, now I asked you all those questions in that way. And I asked them kind of playfully because I want you to see what's going on with your motivation. There's a part of you that's motivated to get better and it plunked down the money for this appointment. And I'm not going to waste it. I'm going to make sure you get what you need. What you need is not to know how to hyper nourish. You already did it before and it worked, right? What you need is to figure out why you didn't keep going. So let's work on that. So all of you listening right now, check in on yourself. When something goes wrong, have any of you started the plan and then got off track and then just left the track completely? Like, here's the track and you're going this way, right? Has that happened? If that's the case, there's some motivation you have not to do it. Let's check in on that, right? So the other thing that you can check into is like some people just have all or nothing thinking. If I can't do raw, I won't even do plant-based. But if you are getting better, something's working for you. And then you stop doing it and then totally go back to something bad. There's something else going on. And so that was the focus of the mastermind session with, with her was in realizing that it wasn't the smoothies, right? Because if it was just that she didn't like smoothies, 
She would have found a salad. She would have found some other way, right? Broccoli dipped in guacamole, whatever it takes. She would have found another way if she was motivated to do it. But if she was motivated not to do it, then one thing going wrong would make a ton of sense as a reason to give up, right? Like, wow, I feel amazing, but I don't like that smoothie anymore. Ah, screw feeling amazing. Let me get sick again. That doesn't make sense when you say it out loud, which is why I kind of make people say it out loud. And I give them these options. Oh, you solved it by doing this. You solved it by doing that because I'm showing them in, in live time what it looks like to be motivated, right? The way, and she said, how did you do it to me? I said, when I am motivated for a goal, you can't stop me. You can't, I'm like, I, I, I acted up or I'm like, I'm like the Terminator in that movie where you see him just running nonstop you know, he's getting shot at, whatever. And he just like, when I have my eye on something I want to do, I will do it no matter what, because it obviously means enough for me. I will make it there. Right. Which means I will go over around. I will tunnel underneath it, but I'll always find a way. That's what motivation looks like. And it's not like I didn't, I had it easy. I didn't have it easy. You know, my biggest dream when I was growing up was to be a doctor and I had to figure out a way to go through high school, college and medical school with active lupus, kidney issues, blood clots, mini strokes, arthritis, brain fog, walking pneumonia and all the other issues that I had because my health was so bad. Right. But I was so determined that I just kept finding a way. I want you to lock into your recovery in that same way. And if you're having trouble with it, it's important to check in with why. What's my motivation not to do this? And so one thing you can do that I often do with my clients, if they don't know, if they can't figure out what that reason is, then maybe you can even journal on it. This is in my book, Goodbye Autoimmune Disease, by the way, is all the emotional work. Not all of it, of course, but, <laughs> but the emotional work I've done with my clients in rapid recovery to help them overcome this. And so you do the emotional work. You might want to write down, like, what's good about staying sick? Right. Somebody else I saw this week, she actually went completely raw and reversed lupus years ago. And then but she was mad that the only way to be lupus free was to be plant based. And she wanted to be able to go to the pubs and eat whatever her friends ate. And so she got, you know, upset over COVID and everything and just moved to all junk food. And she got not only did she get lupus back eating junk food for two years straight, but she also got kidney failure. And then when I met with her, she was still eating badly. And I was like, but, but your kidneys are going to fail. And the doctors are saying you could end up on dialysis. Why aren't you doing it? Why aren't you doing even what you did years ago? You don't even have to do what I'm saying yet. I mean, I can give you a better plan, but even what you did before, you'd be better off. And so we had to deal with her real motivational issue. What had nothing to do with food. It had to do with feeling left out, feeling resentful that... I can't do whatever I want to do and have my health. For me, I'm kind of the opposite. If I can have my health, I'll do whatever it takes because I want to be here. I love being here on this planet, on this earth. Even when I'm in pain, physically or emotionally, I'd rather be here than not be here. And I'll always fight for my life. And if that means drinking nothing but smoothies, I would do it. But it doesn't. That's just, you know, in the early days, yes, eating all raw on the Goodbye Lupus Protocol, that's what works the best and the fastest. But this kind of idea that, like, it has to be in a way I want to do it, we don't get those options on this planet. We don't get, like, it, you, there's, there's a best way to do things, and we should be grateful, right? I told her when I was on two years of chemotherapy, if someone had said the other option would be to drink smoothies, I would have been drinking smoothies like it was my job, right? Chemotherapy and high dose steroids for years just to put me into a stable state to avoid dialysis. I did it because I want to be here, but I would have preferred a better option. I would have given up pizza in a heartbeat if I had another option. So what's your motivation to do what I feel like doing in the moment or to, or to live and be healthy, right? And I told her this means depression. If your need to be high in the moment on a flavor you feel like eating is more important than avoiding dialysis, you're depressed. Let's work on the depression, right? So that's what I do. I pinpoint motivation. That's what, I, and that's why people end up doing rapid recovery do so well. My husband and I are both experts in helping people be motivated and focused on their goals and to get rid of the stuff that gets in their way, right? Um, the group we have right now is is full. We'll have the next group in March, and there are people enrolling in that. But but really, it's not about that. What I want to do right now is help you be focused. 
So I hope that helps you. Today, I want you to do that. I want you to sit down and evaluate your motivation as if it was Dr. G evaluating your motivation and say, what's the evidence that I'm motivated and I'm going forward? Am I giving up or do I work through problems? Do I solve the problem and keep going? Or do I just get off the track and walk away and just let myself stay sick? Evaluate your motivation, figure out what motivates you and use that as that carrot that you dangle to make you rush towards your goals rather than giving up on them. We only get one chance at this life, right? We're here now, we get one vehicle to drive. How many miles you wanna get? I wanna get as many miles as I can and I wanna go everywhere I wanna go. I want that for you too. I just can't do it for you. So, all right, that is my motivational check-in today for mid-January. So all of you can think about that and hopefully you have some really, really good ideas that are stimulated for you to help you get going. All right, I'm gonna look over here so I can read questions and see what we got going on in the questions area today. I'll see Nene33 on Instagram says, I started my vegan diet a week ago and I already feel better. That is awesome. I'm so happy. Thanks, Love is Frequency, for telling your friends. Aw, thanks for all the love, Bianca. Hi, Rebecca. All right, let's see what we got. Happy well Wednesday, uh, Gulnara. Okay, Nene also asks, can we eat eggs for inflammation? So you just said you're, you've been plant-based a week and you feel better and now you want to eat eggs. No, they are pro-inflammatory. They're very high in arachidonic acid, which is the main... Uh, that is the main ingredient that feeds into the omega-6 pathway to grade all of our inflammation. So no, do not undo it. You're on the right path. Stay on the path, Terminator style, okay? Um, let's see. So Tess Tugston wants to know when hypernourishing, should you only have the protocol or can you eat other things? So hypernourishing as a protocol is about what you're adding to your diet, okay? So hypernourishment is about what you're adding. So the hypernourishment protocol is about adding this overdose in daily of the cruciferous vegetables, the omega-3, the water intake to help your cells with cellular repair, help your immune function so that you can not have excess inflammation, repair damage, go after all of the bad guys that could be attacking you, bacteria, viruses, all that kind of things, right? So that's about what you add. Now you can add hypernourishment to any diet. If you are trying to get healthier, then you want to add it to a plant-based diet. And for some people, that's really all they need to do. The example I gave earlier, this one woman was so freaking lucky that she didn't even do the full raw program. She just went plant-based and added hypernourishment and her symptoms were all disappearing. Fantastic. If that works for you, hallelujah, be grateful and do that, right? The Goodbye Lupus Protocol is an aggressive protocol to quickly reverse disease as quickly as your body can. And that is a raw protocol where you're really focusing on the raw vegetables, the uh, flax and chia seeds or flax oil, the water intake, you can add fruit for flavoring and other seasonings and things. There's a lot of options, uh, ways to do it. Uh, one of the easiest ways to do it is with smoothies. Now I have my new recipe book, which by the way, thank you all of you who have been getting it. Um, I've been seeing people post their favorite recipes online. And uh, I was hoping that it would make you all happy. We worked a long time on it, but that has uh, recipes in it. Look, she's up there now. Wait, nope, this side, everything's reversed. Uh, the Goodbye Lupus Hello Delicious. It's all raw recipes for breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, smoothies, uh, desserts. Um, some of the desserts were contributed by my son, Alex, and I have really appreciated all the tributes. People have been posting pictures of his, uh, his chocolate candies as a tribute to him. Um, so thank you to all of you for that. But that book was released for people who are looking for ways to turn it into meals. So I've always been kind of a simpleton when it comes to food. Uh, smoothies, salads, I'm good. Um, if I'm going to make fancy raw, it's going to be on the weekend. And honestly, when I really made fancy raw, it was usually with my son, Alice, because he wanted to be a chef and he enjoyed making that stuff. Um, a lot of the time, I'm happy with a good dressing, throw it over some salad, and I'm good to go. But if you're looking for more exciting ways to do it, then you can make all these different types of meals and make it into something fancy and exciting for yourself if you like to be in the kitchen. Um, but that would be doing the full goodbye lupus protocol. The goodbye autoimmune disease protocol, by the way, is the nutrition of the goodbye lupus protocol, but we add in all the emotional work. And these got their names because of the books that I wrote about them in. So goodbye lupus was a story of how I became lupus free 18 years ago and um, the nutrition that makes you sick and the nutrition for healing. That's where people ever heard of me from is that book, the day it was published, became a bestseller and people all over the world started reversing their disease, just following the nutrition plan. Then we started to see there were people who were struggling 
to, um, to do the work, to eat the food, as I was just talking about, the motivation. And also people were wondering, well, is it just lupus? So I said, okay, I'll publish a case series book about all the diseases we've helped. And I'll add in the emotional work for the people who struggle with motivation. And that became Goodbye Autoimmune Disease. So the Goodbye Autoimmune Disease Protocol, that's the one that we talk about when we're talking about doing the emotional work as well. But it does work for everything. It will rapidly reverse um, heart disease, uh, diabetes, all sorts of, of different illnesses that people have. Um, so it's always a great idea. And it boosts your immune system. Uh, I just got a paper accepted finally took years of shopping around because the uh, the journals are not interested in publishing case series uh, in nutrition. And it's actually, uh, but we wanted it to be in a high level journal that people read. Doctors need to read it, right? So I don't want to publish in something that no one's going to even look at. I want it to be something. So we worked at it. We finally just got accepted. I'm very excited. I'll, I'll let you know as soon as it's out. Um, but it was, uh, oh goodness, now I'm trying to remember why I, I, I went to it, but, but uh, what, what we're talking about is how, uh, yes, in the discussion of it, I was talking about how the nourishment continues to make people healthy even after it reverses diseases. So people who have been healthy, this is a case series on people with lupus and Sjogren's who have been, who healed completely symptom-free within two to eight weeks doing rapid recovery and have been symptom free for four to 10 years since then with no relapse in maintenance mode, right? So it's a really cool case series. Um, but once they are healthy, they continue hypernourishing, they don't get regular stuff, colds and flus and all the other stuff other people deal with, they don't get that. Plus their organs appear younger, whether it's internal organs or skin, everything else. So it's a really exciting thing to see that continuing to eat that way will give you health that lasts you for a lifetime and reverses the aging process, which is always nice as well for those of you who are like me and just want to be here as long as you can. All right, let's see. Let's move over to YouTube. All right. So on YouTube, uh, Purity and Plants wants to know, is it okay to use flavored flaxseed oil like Barleen's Omega-3? Um, I, I know that Barleen's makes a good flaxseed oil. I'm not aware of the flavored one though. So I would just check the ingredients and uh, I, I usually like it as clean as possible. We're using the flaxseed oil for the omega threes. So I, I, I don't know what they're adding, but I'd be worried there was some kind of sugars or something in there. I would just use the oil plain, but um, you'll have to check the label and see what's in it. I, I don't know off the top of my head, so I can't tell you for sure. Uh, Sabrina. Hi, do you have any experience with cluster headaches? Not personally in terms of, I don't get them, but I have experience with migraines, but I have worked with people with cluster headaches and found that people with chronic headaches do really well in my plan. And it's a combination, I think it's more moving into the good autoimmune protocol at this point, it's a combination of doing the nourishment as well as getting the sleep, working on your self-care and stress, um, all of those things combined, as well as I have a lot of little tricks and things for headaches, just because that was one of the main things I used to deal with. Uh, but definitely uh, people do better with, with the headaches uh, when they do our plan. Also, hydration is very important in headaches. And of course, as part of my goodbye lupus protocol or hypernourishment is, is the hydration as well. All right, let's see. Bree, do you find that people with POTS need more than one teaspoon of salt today with doing the goodbye autoimmune protocol? Um, typically, yes. Typically, yes. Um, do we have to stop the high omega-3 intake prior to having surgery due to increased bleeding risk? No. So actually studies have been done on this because this was a question for a while is since it helps people avoid blood clots to have higher omega-3, high omega-6 in your system causes blood clots. So if that's the case, could it make somebody bleed? And in our experience, no, we have not seen that be a problem, but also they've done studies now looking at that and they found it did not increase bleeding risk in people who had surgery if they were eating flax seeds, chia seeds, things like that. Um, you're welcome, Josephine. Uh, I'm glad to be able to do this. Let's see. All right. Uh, Noelia Sancho. Hi, Dr. G. My sister has had chronic diarrhea for two years. Doctors can't find the cause. There's not parasites. She doesn't eat gluten or dairy. What do you think it could be? Could the good autoimmune disease protocol help her? Thank you. So I don't know off the top of my head. Um, so if it was something that happened out of the blue, sometimes it was a cause to it, right? Some kind of infection. And then that, and then maybe you took antibiotics for the infection and then it affected your microbiome and you got stuck with it, right? 
sometimes there is something that acutely causes it uh, in terms of an outside influence, like an infection. Sometimes it can be related to stress levels. People with chronic bowel issues often also have chronic anxiety issues. There's things that could be connected. So it's very hard for me just by looking at the question to know what the cause is. Um, I have seen it. I did have one client who um, I had, it was an interesting session because I had seen her years ago for rheumatoid arthritis and, uh, and she did well and I never heard from her again because she was better. And then it was years later and I saw her on my schedule and I'm like, that's, I wonder what happened. I hope she didn't relapse. And I saw her and she was still doing fine with that. But her and her husband had both gotten an infection in their gut a year before they both got diarrhea. His went away after a couple of weeks and hers never went away. And she's taken all the antibiotics. I can't find any reason why. And, and I thought about it and I said, well, sometimes people just need a little help healing their colon. So why don't you try taking some l glutamine and let's see what happens. So I said, let's do my nutrition plan to make sure we accelerate healing and some l glutamine, which actually I have seen results in and helping heal uh, the gut. And so we did that. And in three days, the diarrhea was gone. And she's like, she had gone to like five doctors in her country trying to solve it. And she's like, next time I'll just call you first. <laughs> so, no problem. But, you know, so maybe you can try that do uh, something that can be helpful. Use a pure powder. There's a, on my Amazon list, I have a, a brand that I've tried before. I know it works. I don't make my own products or anything, but if I like a product that I've used, I add it to my Amazon list. It's like Amazon influencer. Uh, I, 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 uh, I just used it because when they offered me that I used it because people often say, Hey, what do you use for this? What do you use for that? So anytime I like a brand, I put it there. My books are there. Everything that I recommend I've mentioned in a live or something, I, I try to put it there. So you could try that and see if that works. If it does, shoot me a message so I can uh, be happy for you. Um, all right, let's see. All right, and Matt Monarch wants to know, what do you think about uh, everyone, even healthy people going on the Goodbye Lupus Protocol four to six weeks a year, like some people go on a fast once a year? I think it's a great idea. I actually have a doctor in Canada who does my rapid recovery group once or twice a year and she says it's just her gift to herself to remind herself to stay nourished and do self-care and she always feels better when she does it so um you don't have to do that with us but yeah i think it's a nice you're talking about like a cleanse um yeah i think it's a great idea absolutely it only ever improves your health some people will even do it just you know they have days when they do that that way or they'll eat raw during the week and cooked on the weekend and you know it's uh yeah it's always an, it's great for your health when i do it mostly is if there's some kind of risk to health. Like if stress is high, lean into the raw. Um, when I finally got COVID, not this last October, but the October before, I finally had a positive COVID test for the first time. And so I just went right into just smoothies and salad. And within three days, I was testing negative. I didn't really have any symptoms, um, but it was just like, whoa, there's an attacker? All right, let's just go right into the protocol. And uh, so if there's a threat like that, then I always lean into it. I always tell people the higher the stress or if you're infected or if you're trying to heal from a surgery or preparing for a surgery or anything like that, doing that protocol is a great way to get your body optimally healthy, get your immune system as healthy and optimal as possible. It's going to help you through it. All right, let me see here. I'm gonna try to get into Facebook. Um, All right. Facebook user asking about the timeline for after symptoms stop and the goodbye autoimmune disease protocol. You actually wrote it out correctly. Uh, so that's the thing. Whenever, so we have a wonderful group on Facebook called Smoothie Shred. It's got thousands of people from all over the world. And it's a free group that people can join who just want to be in a group with other people who are following my teaching and my husband Thomas's teaching either for health or fitness or anything. So um, it's an awesome group and people post the results in there and it's inspiring, but sometimes people also post their opinions and stuff. So I say like, if you've heard me directly say something and it's different than what somebody else is saying in the group, listen to the, what I said. <laughs> okay. So, cause it is my protocol. So you got it right. What you wrote here uh, is you got it right. Um, Okay, let me see here. It's a long paragraph, so I don't want to read out all of it, but you guys can look at it if you want. Um, let me see here. So Jess Callie says, hey, Dr. G, uh, I'm autoimmune, have high IgM, IgG, CD4, CD8 panel off, even when I did chemo last year, 
I'm homozygous, I'm THFR, I have Crohn's, I cannot have grains, legume, soy. Can I still do your protocol? Yep, you're a great candidate for my protocol. We got to get you healthy. Uh, we got to get you as healthy as possible. There's no grains on my protocol. There's no soy on the Goodbye Lupus protocol. And people with Crohn's do really well, really rapidly in my protocol. Sometimes we have to make some adjustments um, depending on how active the Crohn's is to make sure that you can absorb the food. So I might change it depending on it. If your Crohn's is in remission, then usually we can jump right in. If it's not, I have ways of kind of titrating people up according to their symptoms, things like that. Um, but yes, absolutely. You can don't say I am autoimmune Jess. It's just an issue you're dealing with, not who you are. All right. Uh, thank you. Fabi C. Um, let me see here. Denise wants to know, can any of the protocols help with degenerative disc disease, specifically sciatica from lumbar herniation and related muscle pain and glutes? So the nutrition can't change your anatomy. All right. That is a different thing. Now it can help bring the inflammation down. So if any of the pain is coming from inflammation, then it's going to help that, right? So a lot of people do feel reduced pain just because the inflammation is lower. It'll also help you recover faster from what you're going to need to have done to reduce that pain. So when people have sciatic pain, they often have connected muscle issues. As you are saying here, often there, there's something called muscle splinting that happens where the muscles kind of harden and knot up around the area, trying to help decrease the pain, but then causing more pressure and pain as well. Really the answer to that is to have that physically manipulated. So muscles do not just release because you're eating better. Those knots are there. So what you need is someone to work them out. So I highly recommend you get the right specialist on board. So for example, um, if you have a back issue working with a sports chiropractor, all right, sports chiropractor is really important. Uh, I'm lucky to have my husband on my team because I've learned so much from him about these issues, but sports chiropractors, sports specialists are the ones who work with uh, professional teams of athletes and they have to get you back on the field as quickly as possible, right? So it's not just like, a, you know, random adjustments. It's very focused, highly specialized. So those guys usually do a great job. Um, also working with the right physical therapy, masseuses, et cetera, to be able to work through and open up those areas to relieve the pressure that's on the nerve. So if you're doing our nutrition protocol while getting all that done, you will recover faster and feel better and bring inflammation down, but it's not going to substitute for the actual physical work that's going to have to be done to try to create some space around that nerve. That can't be done with nutrition alone. I wish it could. We've actually seen that be an issue for people who've done, for example, in rapid recovery, inflammatory pain goes away pretty quickly for people. But sometimes there's muscular pain as well. And it's one of the things we're pretty good at identifying. One of the main ways we know pretty quickly is if all the joint pains and everything are gone, but there's another pain there that sounds muscular, especially my husband helps run the group and he, he knows it pretty quickly as well, just because that's his specialty. So when we see that, we will recommend that. And oftentimes we'll be like, oh my God, I went and I had that massage done um, by the sports specialist and the pain went away right away. And they were thinking it was lupus or rheumatoid arthritis. And it was just that that muscle needed to be released. So they need to foam roll it. They need a specialist to work on it. So you do need to, uh, you do need to work on muscles physically, uh, manually, not just nutritionally. Okay. Let me see. All right. Thank you, Sherry. Um, let's see here. So Julie wants to know, can your program help with a high eosinophil count and body edema? I'm suffering. I was a fit, healthy 57 year old yoga instructor three months ago and felt great. Out of the blue, woke up with swelling, both legs and blood work showed high eosinophils, 43%. Edema slowly spread, making it challenging to walk, shower, type on a computer and get dressed. All my other organs are fine. Negative for Lyme, parasite, celiac, autoimmune. So most uh, straightforward answer is I don't know. Uh, eosinophils are usually associated with some kind of allergy. Um, so I think you're someone I'd have to take a deeper dive with uh, to learn your whole history, when it started, what was going on in your life. This is why my sessions are 75 minutes because sometimes I really need to hear from the beginning how things started. What I can say is typically doing my protocol only helps unless you have an issue where you are also allergic to some of the 
ingredients or something, which case you might not, you, you get like healing, but also reactions. So this sounds a bit complicated. I can tell you, I've definitely helped a lot of zebras. And what I mean by that, it's, um, it's this corny thing they tell you in medical school, or at least they, they used to say all the time in medical school when I was there, um, was that when you hear hoofbeats and you're in America, then you should think of a horse, not a zebra, right? So if you hear hoofbeats, it's because there's no zebras here, right? Unless they're in a zoo or something, right? So, so most of the time when people get sick, think of what's most likely. Don't think of all the exotic stuff. Think of what's most likely. Well, in my practice, uh, I have a lot of zebras, uh, maybe more zebras than horses, you know, most likely because if they were horses and whatever works for them, they wouldn't be there. Right. So I have a lot of folks where nobody quite knows what's wrong and they get better anyway. Um, so uh, there was a doctor who did a, a, a Zoom that we posted a clip of on my on my YouTube and Instagram and Facebook who, you know, she she's a zebra where she couldn't figure out what's wrong with her. And she's the head of internal medicine teaching the residents. And nobody could figure out why she couldn't walk unless she took steroids, right? She did my protocol. It went away. We still don't know what it was. Don't care. She's like, I don't care. I can walk. I don't need medicine. Doesn't matter, right? So I don't know what the cause is to this, but I'm happy to get on the case with you and help you figure it out. But this might be something where we need to sit down and work. You can always try on your own. And if it works, come back next time, tell us or, or send me a message. But I, yeah, I don't know right off the bat what's going on with you, but it sounds like definitely something happened. And if you went 57 years without being sick and something went wrong, that tells me your body really knows how to be healthy. I lasted 16 years before my kidneys start going, right? So if you lasted 57 years without illness, your body knows how to be healthy and it remembers it's a recent memory. So that means there is a path back to that. And we just need to figure out what the trigger is and get you in the healing process. So I'd be happy to help if I can. Um, but yeah, I recommend an appointment or something for that. Yeah. Let me see. Let me see here. All right, let me go back to Instagram. All right, so Maka says, I have hypothyroidism, not Hashimoto's. Do you still recommend 300 micrograms of, uh, I guess you're asking about iodine today? Yes. Um, thank you, Mona Seves. I, I receive your hugs. Um, let me see here. Uh, Frenchie Greeny, yes, this helps optic neuritis. We have had great results for that. All different kinds of inflammatory eye disease. Um, I actually, it's interesting. Uh, there is a uh, type of uveitis called birdshot uveitis. It's a different type of eye condition, very, very rare. And uh, I'd never even heard about, about of it before I had my first client with it who healed completely. Since then, uh, I've helped so many people with this illness that there's like a birdshot uveitis group where like all they do is like work on my protocol, like share it, like give, they send me messages about how great they all do. Um, and like eye doctors now that are really interested <laughs> apparently because they don't understand why people are going to remission, but uh, different, different kinds of eye disease have responded really well, um, including optic neuritis and even glaucoma. So it's, uh, it's definitely the nutrition is received in all the organs, including the eyes. Um, thank you, Betsy. Love you back. Let's see. Um, oh, how do I say this one? Kush uh, Buzala Juza 9. I'm so sorry. It's, I'm doing the best I can. Um, so success with psoriasis. Yes, absolutely. You can find videos of that uh, even on psoriasis, uh, on psoriasis on YouTube or in my book, Goodbye Autoimmune Disease. Uh, even the, the foreword uh, is done by Ellen Joppy Jones, who healed her psoriasis plaques uh, in two weeks working with me. Um, let me see. More questions about psoriasis. Thank you. I still buy Millie. Um, and Drinkser says, I got so much better just by hyper nourishing with cooked vegan. Awesome. Thank you, Gloria Zada. I appreciate that. Thank you, Gina Petropolis. Thank you, Tijana Brennan. You guys are all so sweet. Um, let me see. So, uh, Juna Love Photography says, My eight year old daughter. Has Hashimoto's, I'd love to do the protocol, but I'm nervous we'll struggle with her because she's a picky eater and gets really moody, stressed, and anxious. So, Juna, this is an issue where the parenting has to come into play, right? So, as parents, it's we're not always, it's not like we're always just supposed to do what our kid wants to do um, or feels like doing or what's going to make it easier for them in the moment, right? Uh, if kids were in charge, well, they'd be, you know, 
eating chips and ice cream and playing video games all day or something like that, right? That's why we have to parent, right? We're, we're one of the only species that has to parent for like 18 years to just make sure they got it, and that they're safe, right? It's, it's a difficult thing. You have a child that has an autoimmune disease and she's eight years old and she lives in your house and she's under your control. There's something you can do about this. So what I recommend is number one, at eight years old, you can have conversations, right? So you can have conversations and say, listen, you had this disease. And not only does it mean you have to take medication, but it means you have a chronic illness and that can get come worse over time. Most of the folks I see who even come to me with rheumatoid arthritis or lupus or other issues had Hashimoto's first, right? They had unchecked autoimmune disease and they don't treat Hashimoto's as autoimmune disease for a very specific reason. It's a risk benefit analysis of medications. If you shut, if you put someone on immunosuppression, it would stop the Hashimoto's, but now they're on immunosuppression which makes them so if they're on prednisone, now they have risk to their bones. They have, they're more likely to get viruses, bacteria, all this stuff, right? So, so they decided since you can replace the thyroid with a pill, just let the immune system kill it. The problem is that while you can replace the thyroid with a pill, you now have unchecked inflammatory autoimmune disease running rampant in the body, which will lead to more things. So over time, people with Hashimoto's will get arthritis and other conditions and may even end up with lupus or rheumatoid arthritis. That's the reality. And your child is only eight years old and already has this condition. So you have a chance to save your child. You've got to make the decision to do it. It won't be convenient. She's going to have some tantrums or issues around it. She might even get mad at you, but you can save your child. Isn't that the thing that you have to focus on? You know, I recently lost a child to an accident. I didn't, I couldn't save. I didn't, wasn't given the opportunity. He was perfectly healthy, but I wasn't given that chance or opportunity. But if he had a disease, are you kidding? My whole house would be on the goodbye lupus protocol because we would do it together to save the child. Take the chance you have. There's a reason why not only is your child sick, but that you're here right now listening to my voice. There's a reason why out of, let me see out of uh, 933 people who are listening to me right now that I got your question. There's a reason that that's happened just right now in this moment. Now it's up to you to actually take action on what you're learning. And from my message looking right at you right now to go and save your child, whether she likes it or not, first of all, but communicate, help her understand or him uh, or them, help them understand. This is what we're doing. This is why. And if they say, why can't I eat that? Why can't I eat that? You say, because I love you too much. I love you too much to let you just eat what you feel like because we have to save you and we have to get you healthy. And that's what we're going to do. If you have an opportunity to save your child, choose to do that. All right. Next question. Let me go to back to YouTube. Let's see here. Um... Okay, um, let me see here. Angie, yes, you can go by weight for cruciferous vegetables. And yes, some are heavier than others, but absolutely, it's not cheating, it's fine. Um, does a goodbye lupus protocol help for seborrheic dermatitis? Actually, uh, I have seen people reverse seborrheic dermatitis on my plan. That wasn't what they came to me for, but they did have that result. Um, actually, the person with birdshot uveitis also reversed that. And he's like, I've had that since I was a kid. I didn't know that could go away, and it did. Um, let me see. Has any has this helped anyone with AFib? Yes, absolutely. It has worked to help people with AFib. Um, let me see here. The cool thing about my program, it's important to understand, is that Goodbye Lupus Protocol, again, it's named for the book I wrote about my own recovery from lupus 18 years ago. But it is specifically the nutrition that your cells use for cellular repair and cellular function. So whether the damage is in your lungs and your heart and your kidneys and your eyes and your skin, the nutrition is going to help repair the damage to your cells. Now, it also is a nutrition necessary to optimize immune function. So again, whether you're sick or getting surgery or you have diabetes or you have high blood pressure, it's going to help because it optimizes the functioning of your cells and your immune system. And so that's why it's so wonderful. It's not like, oh, wait, I have this other disease. I need something else. No, your, the human body requires certain nutrients. And we've been able to put that into a protocol that then works to help people recover. So in general, for most issues, people ask me about, I'm going to say yes. 
as it helps with that. But I'll only ever say yes for sure if I have observed my clients heal from it. Otherwise, I'll say, I don't know, but here's what I think or something like that. That way you never you only ever have re real answers from real results. Okay, let me see here. All right, uh, Noelia Sanchez says, how much vitamin D do you recommend? There's a doctor who claims that you can uh, cure autoimmunity by high dosing vitamin D, what do you think? Well, there is a connection between vitamin D and uh, autoimmunity. You can't cure all autoimmune diseases just with giving vitamin D. That's, that's not a thing, that would be so cool. <laughs> Like eat whatever you want and take vitamin D. That would be awesome. Uh, that's not been what I've observed to be true. What I have observed is that when people have low vitamin D levels, their antibodies stick around and they can get symptomatic. And so it's one of the reasons why I do obsessively remind people to take their D. I have heard other folks um, in the plant-based world tell people not to do that. And then they put like some, some like graphs and stuff on, on a slide um, everything I teach you is always based off of actual experience. I never speak to you from something I read. I just don't find it respectful. And it's also not consistent because I know what goes on in studies and what they choose to report and how hard it is to get good data published and all that kind of stuff. And one study doesn't tell you everything. So I only ever speak from results. What I have noticed in my actual clients, and I've had over 4,000 people that have helped reverse disease at this point, last I counted, which was a while ago. So vitamin D, my experience is that when people's vitamin D levels are low, they often fight to get results, even when they're doing everything right, or they'll get results, but kind of like structure fluctuate. I did have someone who had been symptom free with normal labs from lupus for a decade, and then suddenly had a symptom pop up and uh, it was a, a clot and an antiphospholipid antibody, just one of them popped up that had been gone for all that time. And the only other abnormality was low vitamin D. It was like 17. So I said, you know what? Before we put you back on the protocol, you've been on maintenance mode forever. You're perfectly happy. There's no other stress or the only abnormality is your D. Let's get you on vitamin D. So we did 50,000 IU a week. Her vitamin D was back to, um, it was it was 40 or so in six, eight, six weeks. And that antibody disappeared and the symptoms went away. So what I have observed is, and then I did look at PubMed and found, oh, wow, antiphospholipid antibodies of low vitamin D are correlated. That's interesting. I saw it. So I've had multiple cases like that where somebody who was in remission suddenly had some symptoms pop up when their D got low or somebody who was fighting to get results while their D was low. And then we fixed that and that improved it. So I recommend you take what you need to get your uh, levels over 40, um, whether or not it's better at 40 or 70 or whatever. That's debatable. Um, what I found is once people are over 40, those issues seem to go away in my cases. So um, for people who have never tested it or don't know, I usually recommend you try that 50,000 IU a week just to let's get you up to a good level. If you can test it, that's always better. Data is nice. So if you can get it tested, wonderful. There are some people in different countries where their doctors won't test it. Like I've seen a lot of folks in Canada that I see will tell me that they refuse to test it because it's expensive. And so in, you know, in their medicine world, um, they're just not going to do that. So you'd have to like pay out of pocket or something like that. So if you don't know, just do that for like six weeks, the 50,000 IU a week, and then go to like 2000 IU a day. And that should maintain it just fine. Um, if, or the other way you can do it is 50,000 IU once and then 2000 IU a day that also works to bring it up. Um, but yes, absolutely low vitamin D can prevent people from full recovery or can cause some relapse of symptoms, but I've never seen is that someone only repaired, used vitamin D and ate junk and they, their autoimmune disease went away. And there's plenty of people I see who already take tons of supplements. A lot of times before people come to me, they will go to like functional medicine doctors and, and, and usually it's the same story. They got like a thousand dollars worth of tests. And then they were given a thousand dollars a month worth of vitamins and they still feel like garbage, right? That's like the usual complaint that I'll get. So a lot of times people are already taking vitamin D, their level of vitamin D is like 90 and they still feel like garbage and we have to change their diet. And then that's when they feel better. So I think in cases where someone has low vitamin D, but no other health risks, they might actually get cured by having their vitamin D be high because that was the reason because vitamin D is not really a vitamin. It's a hormone that's involved in immune function. 
So if you're missing a necessary hormone in your immune system, you can have inflammatory issues, right? But for people where it's not the cause, they're not going to get that result. So um, that that is my long-winded but very technical answer to help all of you who might have heard other things. You know, a lot of people out there, they get a result and they're like, this is the cure. And what I've learned both being a patient, being a genetic researcher, being a physician, and then working in disease reversal all these years is uh, it, that's not always the case. People often think they found the answer and they just, it was just that that happened to be the one component they needed or, you know, they got lucky in some area, they got better in spite of this issue, in spite of other things they did. You know, it's, it's not always, you have to go deeper. And that's why I didn't even release the protocol until I knew it was reproducible and we could get the same results in everyone we tested. Uh, rather than say, hey, I'm better, just do what I did, right? So just be careful about claims like that. Okay, but it doesn't hurt to take the D. I do, I do agree to take it, take it, take it. All right, um, let me see here. All right, I hope all of you uh, have been dealing with the freeze okay. My kid actually had a day off from school yesterday because it was too cold to be at the bus stop. It was like 20 degrees. I grew up in New York and Pennsylvania. I was at the bus stop at five degrees, <laughs> but you know, we're soft in Texas. All right, let's see here. Um, let's go back to Facebook. All right, so Robin wants to know, when on the Goodbye Lupus Protocol, how do you decide if someone needs to get off fruit completely? Do you decide, how do you decide if they need to do low histamine version? So I don't wanna confuse the general public about these things. But in the goodbye lupus protocol, fruit is not required. It's optional. It's not necessary for, for healing. And I know all the fruitarians, like I hear the gas, uh, but <laughs> it's not. Um, so the, uh, the high nutrient vegetables like cruciferous and spinach, the flax and chia seeds, the water, those are the critical components. Fruit's optional. So what we have found working with all of our clients over all of these years is that most people can use some fruit and they do just fine. But once the fruit gets too high, they stop getting those rapid results that I'm known for, right? So we, we realized that it's an optional component and we have to minimize it. And that's how we came to this whole thing. Like we found 25% or less of the diet, people still tend to get good, good results, but there are exceptions. So when do I look for those exceptions? If I'm not seeing the results happen as quickly as I expect to. So usually when I'm making those exceptions, it's when I'm watching people. So the reason I have rapid recovery programs is so that I can watch, analyze, support, coach, motivate, right? Every single day. If I'm with you every day, you tend to do better. That's just, that's something that I realized was that um, it turns out that for some people, this is hard. And if I hold their hand and watch them and support them every day, we can get to the finish line, right? So that's why I do it. So when I'm watching people like that and I can see, I mean, people could lie to me, but it's less likely in that kind of program, right? If I'm watching someone every day and within at least the at maximum three weeks, we don't see at least one positive change. And that doesn't usually happen, right? Usually there's a lot of changes, but if at three weeks, I don't for some reason see a change, then I will start really diving into, okay, is there a food sensitivity? Um, is there something else going on? Usually if, if they, it's not the food, usually it's not, usually it's their stress or their moods, their self-care, all of those things tend to create inflammation and can fight back against the healing work. So it would really have to be that they are happy and well-rested and they're doing everything right on the program. Not like a most of the program, except no, that's not, then that's not a test, right? So if they're doing everything right and I'm still like, wow, I'm not seeing the breakthrough I'm expecting, then I'll start looking at that. Sometimes they just need more time, but that's usually when I would look at it. Now, if you're doing this on your own and you don't even know if you're getting it right, it might just be that you need more time or you need to recheck and make sure you're doing it correctly. If you're in our Smoothie Shred group on Facebook, we have, um, we have uh, in the guide section, like what is hypernourishment? What is it to be on the goodbye lupus protocol? What is it to be on the goodbye autoimmune disease protocol? So people can like check and make sure that they got it all right. And it's up to date, right? Like goodbye lupus came out in 2015. I've worked with so many people since then. Some things are even more optimized now and more specific because I always adjust and grow over time. 
Uh, I'm not going to stay stagnant. The more experienced I am, the more specific I can be, right? So uh, that's a great place to go if you're not sure. But yeah, so if I'm watching someone in real time, then I'm able to, to, to know this is when I would expect you to have a breakthrough. And if I don't see it, then I'll start making adjustments. Um, it's less likely to be histamine. I see more histamine issues in people who have long COVID, but not everyone. Um, so one easy thing to check if you're not sure if you're doing it right and you're like, wow, I, I feel like I'm, I'm the one that's not getting results and I think I'm doing everything right, then you can always test no fruit. And if you do that and you give that a couple of weeks and if you feel great, then it might be that that's what you needed or it might be that you were actually allergic or sensitive to one of the fruits you were using and you just didn't know it. So, um, but if you're feeling better, then you can start testing like one at a time and see how you feel. Um, but yeah, those are, very, those are usually personal adjustments I make, whether I think there's a sensitivity or something based off of progress. That's how I decide. All right, let me see. So Sen wants to know, does Thomas recommend protein powder or L-glutamine when building muscle? So it really, the protein powder really uh, depends on whether or not somebody has any health issues. So if somebody has, so first of all, he doesn't recommend you do bodybuilding nutrition because that requires, um, bodybuilding nutrition is about building your mass size, right? It's about forcing weight gain. And the only way to force weight gain is also to, to put some inflammation into the body. So he always says, do the bodybuilding workouts on the goodbye lupus protocol if you're sick, right? Don't worry about weight gain. You'll still get stronger. Um, we just had someone who is a, a professional athlete do rapid recovery. She privately did rapid recovery with Thomas. Um, and so uh, she got rid of the lupus symptoms. Her energy is back to normal. And she actually is breaking her own personal records now. She had to eat like more than double what the rest of us would need to eat because of how athletic she is to be able to have enough uh, food to power her workouts but it worked really well. So you will get stronger. You will get faster. You will get healthier. You just won't gain mass. Now, when you're ready to get bigger, you're like, I have no disease. I have no inflammation and you have been disease free for six months or more, or you're listening to me because not because you're sick, but because you, you are into fitness and other things, then, uh, then he will allow things like that, but it'll be like the pea protein, that kind of stuff. Oh, glutamine is fine either way. Um, L-glutamine prevents the breakdown of muscle tissue from exposure to cortisol. So sometimes people will use that if they have high cortisol or they're taking a uh, corticosteroid, something like that. Um, but the protein powder, I really recommend you don't do it uh, if you've had issues with chronic illness. Um, and if you do that, you've been healthy for more than six months. It's so much easier to just use food sources like edamame, tofu uh, to get your protein rather than add something processed. But again, for healthy people, yes, he does allow it. Okay, let's see, we have a little bit more time. Um, let's see. Sharon says, this is kind of on the same vein. I started the shakes last week and your book arrived yesterday. I was just wondering how to make sure I get enough protein in my diet. Any tips? I'm eating loads of raw green vegetables, letting it feel better already. Stop my antidepressants this week. Thank you. You're welcome and awesome results already. Um, you get enough protein. If you're eating on plan and you feel full, you're getting enough protein. Uh, it does not cause protein deficiencies. And I do have a ton of videos talking about protein. So I'm going to refer you to my YouTube. And if you go to my channel and you look at protein, you'll see videos where I describe it. But there's absolutely no problem. If you're eating enough food, you're getting enough protein. And the fact that you're feeling better tells you how happy your body is with you. So that is perfect. Let's go over to Instagram and just get some of the last questions in here. Let's see. Um, Uh, let's see. So Nia Lachlan 2016 says, I was diagnosed with lupus SLE in 2018. Are low white blood cells normal? Does the protocol help with that? So um, I do have videos on low white count. The answer is yes and no, because some people have a low white count because lupus is affecting their ability to make white blood cells. So sometimes it's because you're sick. Sometimes people with lupus have low white count because of a side effect of their medications. Some of the medications that you use for lupus have a side effect of low white count. So it could be that. I've seen it many, many times, right? Now, really healthy people can have a low white count because a white count is part of your inflammatory immune system. And it just means your baseline inflammation is lower than other people. And that's a good thing. So I would say if your white count is because of lupus, then yes, it will help. If your white count is because you need a lot of medicines for your lupus and we get you healthy so you don't need those medicines, yes, it will help. So 
hopefully that answers the questions in a way that makes sense. Um, you're welcome, Norm Mac Marian. Let's see. Uh, Jim Genie 0906, I have scleroderma and I've been on your goodbye autoimmune protocol for six weeks and doing so much better. I'm so happy for you. It is so great for scleroderma. Um, will it help heal telangiectasia? Um, probably not because that's already like a broken blood vessel. So I don't know that it would make a difference for that one. But we're, you're, you're getting better from scleroderma. So that's more important. That's more important. And I'm really excited for you. All right, let's see one last one. Um, let me see. Um, so Jazreen Janjua says, I'm fully raw. I've gained about 25 pounds, limited fruit intake, heart and kidneys are healthy. Can my meds cause this much weight gain on prednisone IVIG? So that is a perplexing question. Um, the raw vegans I know tend to be really, really thin. Um, and I have some good friends that are fully, fully raw. One of them is even called that. <laughs> um, but, uh, so I don't know the answer to this. If you're on my protocol, then there's, then there's no chance that it's because of fat, right? Because goodbye lupus protocol also accelerates your metabolism and burns fat, which is the reason I did it originally. I didn't know it was going to help lupus. I just wanted to be lean and, and look good in my wedding dress. Um, and so I lost all the weight and I lost the lupus too. And we're, what happened? Right. So, um, so if it's, so the first question would be, is it body fat? Or is it something else? We have to solve the right problem. People are often solving the wrong problem. How do you know if it's fat or something else? That you're going to have to go to a doctor, all right? If it's edema, then you have a health issue. Maybe with your kidneys or your heart and they didn't find it, maybe something else. But if it's edema, when you stick a finger and push against the area, which it wouldn't be your hand to be like your layers on, but you push against it and you can leave a thumbprint in it, that's edema. That's a different problem to solve, right? That's not fat, that's edema. Is there something else going on? So most likely your doctor would need to do a full exam and see, is this edema or not? And if it's not, I would also recommend imaging. You know, MRIs can show us how much body fat you have. And so uh, you can look at, well, here's the body fat and here's actual other stuff going on, right? Sometimes people have, uh, they gain weight and it's a tumor or something else. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just saying, we don't know what the weight gain is. So I can't give you a solution on how to solve it unless I know what it is. If you already know, it's definitely body fat. I have a panis hanging down over my belly. Then there's something going on with your nutrition intake. I, and I would recommend you do my protocol because we get the omega threes going. You limit the fruit, you get your cruciferous going, you get your water intake up. That should burn fat. So if you know it's fat, my protocol is the way to go. Um, but if you don't know the reason that you're gaining weight and you've gained that kind of weight, that is a reason to go see your doctor. So, all right, everybody. Um, I'm super happy to see all of you here. I appreciate all of you for coming out once again. Um, I love coming to see all you guys. I hope that I'm keeping you motivated. I hope you're going after your health. If you joined late, go to the beginning and watch my motivation check-in to make sure that you're making the choices you need to for you, for your kids, for the people in your life, for your health, for your happiness. Do it for you and do it for the people who love you and they need you to be here. I will see you next week. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Bye, everybody.